Good morning everyone. Today I'll be discussing about tuning the non-enzymatic glucose sensitivity by controlling the morphology of copper oxide structure. A morphology control synthesis of different nanostructures is a great challenge posed in front of the researchers as the physical and chemical properties of nanomaterials are both size and shape dependent. The present work discusses the facile synthesis, characterization and applications of copper oxide nanostructure. The morphology of the copper oxide nanostructure was controlled simply by varying the reaction conditions such as molar ratio of the precursors, pH of the reaction, etc. Now, the synthesized nanostructures were then thoroughly characterized using X-ray diffraction studies, various spectroscopic techniques and electron microscopy studies. Then the synthesized nanostructures were used for glucose sensing activities. Now the synthesis of the copper oxide nanostructures. Now the synthesis procedure involved was very simple and the method used was wet chemical precipitation method. Now initially two of solution of one molar copper nitrate, uh, two molar sodium hydroxide solution was added drop wise and the mixture was continuously stirred. Now two kinds of uh, synthesis were undertaken. First the pH of the reaction was varied. Now the pH was continuously monitored and changed by adding sodium hydroxide dropwise. Similarly, the uh, ratio of copper nitrate to sodium hydroxide was also varied. And like the four different the synthesis was undertaken in four using four different ratios: one is to three, one is to four, one is to five, and one is to eight. And after the after the stirring, the extra stirring process was complete. Uh, uh, precipitates were seen in the uh, precipitates were seen in the mixture. Now uh, these precipitates were filtered, washed, and dried, and then the dried precipitates were calcined at 250 degrees Celsius for three hours, and finally a uh, black-colored solid uh, copper oxide was obtained. Now this copper oxide solid was solid powder was characterized using different techniques. Um, the, uh, this the figure shows the X-ray diffraction studies of uh, the synthesized copper oxide nanostructures at different pH of the reaction. Uh, we can see that the pH change in pH does not seem to affect the uh, crystal structure of the copper oxide nanostructures and the uh, Copper oxide nanostructures were indexed according to the standard JCPDS database and they possessed bonoclinic structure. Next, the FTIR and Raman spectroscopy of the synthesized nanostructure was carried out. Now, if we have a look at the FTIR plot, here around 3500 cm inverse, uh, uh, a broad, broad peaks are obtained. So these peaks are attributed to the uh, to the presence of OH group, which might be due to the presence of uh, residual moisture in the sample. So, if we go towards the lower wave number, in the, uh, close to 500 to 700, we have some peaks. These peaks are these peaks correspond to the metal oxygen stretching. So, this confirms the presence of copper oxide in our sample. So when then the Raman spectroscopy of the samples were all was also done, and we can see we we can see here three peaks A G B G and P G. So two B G peaks and one A G peak. So these peaks are the, the characteristic Raman peaks of copper oxide nanostructures. Thus the formation of copper nan, copper oxide was uh, confirmed. Then since copper oxide is a low band semiconductor, so to, we have to find out the uh, to find out the band gap of the copper oxide synthesized copper oxide nanostructures at different pH values. UV visible spectroscopy and tau plot was pl uh, was also plotted. So from the UV vis we can see that from 800 to 100 we are getting a broad hump. This broad hump is a characteristic hump of copper oxide nanostructures. And when a plot between uh, EG and uh, alpha square h nu was plotted the tangent to the plot gives us the tangent to the plot at which the value of 
alpha square h mu is zero gives the band gap, and the band gap calculated for uh, the copper oxide nanostructures at different pH is almost 1.38 electron volt, which is in accordance with the uh, standard uh, standard bulk uh, band gap of copper oxide. That's the scanning electron uh, scanning electron microscopy of the copper oxide semiconductor copper oxide nanostructure was was done. Now from the figure it is we can see that that at pH 4 we are getting uh, th 3D spindles. The morphology of the copper oxide nanostructure was three dimensional spindles. When the pH was increased to 7, we the morphology didn't change, didn't change, and we were getting 3D spindles. However, the size at more pH was more. When the pH was increased, the size also increased. And finally, when we moved to pH 11, the spindle-shaped morphology got changed, and we got uh, leaf-like morphology. So this, uh, so this, uh, clear this. So this resulted, like we can say that that uh, changing in pH changed the morphology of the copper oxide nanostructures. Now then, the glucose sensing activity of the copper oxide nanostructures were at synthesized at different pH values was tested. Now the figure shows the, this figure shows the cyclic voltammetry of curves for the different synthesized copper oxide nanostructures. Now if we look at the graph uh, the black trace that is at pH 4 we can see that now moving in the positive direction we can see that at around uh, 0.45 the oxidation current is increasing increasing uh, rapidly and we are getting a broad hump at around 0.6 volt which corresponds to the Oxidation of Cu plus 2 Cu2 Cu plus 2 Co2 plus, and in the cathodic scan, we are getting a peak at around 0 0.5557 volt, which corresponds to the reduction of Cu2 plus back to Cu plus. Now, if we have a look at the uh, curves for pH 7 and pH 11, we can see there is a, the oxidation and reduction are seen. However, the current, the redox currents are lower as compared to pH 4. Thus, this curve gives us an idea that the copper synthesized copper oxide nanostructures have some electrocatalytic behavior. So, in order to probe the probe the catalytic behavior more, prono amperometric studies were was done of the different synthesized nanostructures. The above graph shows the chronoamperometric curves for the synthesized nanostructure, and the lower plot shows the uh, corresponding calibration curves of the different synthesized nanostructures. Now, seeing at the uh, seeing at the chronoamperometric, chronoamperometric and calibration curves, we can see that the current is increasing on every subsequent addition of glucose. So these uh, the response was checked we checked to the addition of 5 mm of glucose at every subsequent addition so we can see that the current is increasing at every subsequent addition and on seeing the calibration we can see that the the in the increase in current is linear so in, in case of pH 4 we are having a perfect linear increase in current while the linearity behavior decreases as the pH is increased. So the sensor parameters, the sensitivity and limit of detection, was also calculated using uh, using these uh, plots, which I'll throw so on which I'll throw some light uh, in the later in later in the coming slides. Now I'll be moving to the other part of the synthesis. Uh, other part, other part of the samples that were also synthesized with the sample, copper oxide nanostructure that were synthesized at different molar ratio, molar ratio of the uh, precursors. Now the graph shows the X-ray diffraction studies of the copper oxide nanostructures synthesized at different molar ratios. Now from the graph we can see that the change in molar ratio did not affect the crystal structure of copper oxide nanostructures. 
and the index planes of copper oxide nanostructure were indexed uh, according to the standard JCPDS database and uh, copper oxide synthesized was found to possess monoclinic structure. Next, uh, similarly, the FTIR and Raman spectra of uh, the copper oxide nanostructure synthesized at different molar ratio was also uh, studied. Now, from the FTIR spectra, we can see that around 3500, the peaks correspond to OH stretching and the peaks that are seen at lower wave numbers these correspond to the CUO stretching. So this confirms the presence of copper oxide nanostructures. Similarly, in case of Raman spectroscopy, we could see three Raman active peaks that are characteristic of copper oxide nanostructures. So the FTIR and Raman spectra were, <coughs> of, were uh, corresponded to the, uh, to the standard copper oxide nanostructures. Next, the UV visible and the top UV, vis UV visible spectroscopy of the copper oxide nanostructure was done and corresponding tau plot was plotted to find the band gap of the copper oxide. It's a broad hump between 800 and 200 for each of the copper oxide nanostructures confirmed the presence of uh, copper oxide formation of copper oxide nanostructures and when the Band gap was collected, uh, evaluated. The band gap evaluated was around 1.35 electron volt. Now, the scanning electron microscopy of the different copper oxide nanostructures at different molar ratio, synthesized at different molar ratio, was also done. So, we can see that if uh, when the molar ratio was 1 is to 3, we, could, we got um, a flower like morphology of copper oxide nanostructures, and as the molar ratio was changed, the amount of sodium hydroxide was increased the flower like morphology got the flowers basically got broken up and we got uh, leaf like morphology and as the sodium hydroxide content was increased in the uh, in the reaction mixture the size of the leaves also started decreasing now the chronoamperometric and chronoamperometric studies were also done to uh, to undertake the quantitative measurements of quantitative measurements of the synthesized nanostructures in order to evaluate the glucose sensing activity of the synthesized copper oxide nanostructure. Now, from the curve, we can see that the as the molar as the glucose is added the current uh, the current response is increasing and the corresponding calibration curve shows us a linear increase in the uh, linear increase in the current so this shows that the copper oxide nanostructures had a good linear behavior to the uh, on good linear behavior and the current increased linearly on every subsequent addition of uh, glucose the flower like morphology was best and it had a, it uh, the flower like morphology showed best sensitivity to the to towards glucose now i would like to conclude my talk at the different uh, morphologies of copper oxide nanostructure were synthesized via so facile wet precipitation method the major advantage of this method is that it is simple it has low cost and the process is easy to scale up the morphology of the copper oxide nanostructures was seen to be affected by changing the reaction conditions and the copper oxide nanostructures showed effective glucose sensing capabilities and as the morphology of the glucose sensor uh, as the morphology of the copper oxide nanostructure was changed the glucose sensing activity uh, also changed with flower like flower like copper oxide nanostructure showing the maximum sensitivity uh, I would like to acknowledge the ANIC 2016 uh, ANIC 2016 organizing committee for giving me a chance to present my work. I would like to acknowledge Director IIT Mandi for providing the laboratory facilities to carry out the work and Indian Council of Medical Research for providing financial assistance. Thank you so much for your patience listening.